Okay, so another FN2 in the house. And this one's been in here for a day and a half, having some work done to it before we got to this stage. Uh, had a few interesting little bits added to it, so Richard will run through the spec at the end. But let's get mapping. We've got the Ecotec software readily installed onto the stock ECU, so Richard can uh, work his magic. Serious. Never get serious. Never get serious. So there's, yeah, that, an, there's an outtake. outtake. There's an outtake, yeah. yeah. Right, for continuity, this is a FN2 Civic that we've uh, we've had in the workshop for a day. Day and a bit. And a bit. Day and a bit. Uh, yeah, Monday was uh, got a Jap Speed uh, two and a half inch single exit already on it. We fitted a Jap Speed uh, exhaust manifold Four to it. It yeah. had the standard manifold and cat on it. Uh, we fitted the RRC inlet manifold with the standard throttle body. We did have a bigger one, but as we've tested previously, that we don't feel they really, uh, they always back, seem to lose power. They never really make yeah. power. Um, plus also this car did have the HKS smaller induction kit on it. So two and a half inch induction kit, it does spread out to sort of three inch. But nevertheless, even again, I felt if you fit the throttle body, you'd have still been with the restriction of the two and a half inch part of the induction kit. So therefore, again, there was no point in fitting that. Um, I don't believe the HKS is the best induction kit for power either. Um, it will fit the RRC inlet, which we've seen many, many times, and that does work and, and obviously produces power. We've seen cars making the 240s with yeah. this, with that, with that inlet on, so we know that's not the problem uh, with this car today. Um, we fitted drag cartel dropping cams, and we did the timing chain and tensioner on this car as yeah. well. So everything went according to plan. Yesterday we just obviously just plodding along, getting everything in there, getting everything put in the car. We fitted. Uh, the 40, uh, 410 cc injectors in this 
uh, obviously because we've got the cams in there, we're obviously expected to also need some more fuel or whatever, yep. so obviously we fitted those as well. Uh, it didn't make the power that I wanted in all honesty. Uh, I think the main problem is, and we always discuss this here, these are really sensitive to exhausts. And I think the problem we've got lying here is we've got a small, uh, we've got the jack speed manifold, which flows okay. We know it does because we've had them on other vehicles, yeah. that, again, that have made the 240s. So we know it's not the manifold that's the problem. I believe it's the exhaust. We, you need that Tegua 70 mil or a three inch exhaust on. All the ones that have made that 240 have all had that Tegua 70 mil or that three inch yeah. on. Uh, I believe coupled with the induction kit today, being the smaller induction kit again the ones that have made that 240 have had the hybrid racing big ball kit on or ours, which, or, or ours which are all three and a half inch uh, i have seen a couple with a cpl kit but they've not quite done as well no. um you know what i mean they're probably made around the 235 mark so i think that what's hurt this car today is just a couple of mods either side of, of yeah. doing it but it's all about flow Basically, your car doesn't have cams in and it made more power than this car. Yeah, I'm, you I'm sat at 230. Yeah, sat at 230, but he does have the better exhaust, the Tegu 70 mil, and he has one of our three and a half inch induction kits on. So then again, that's what's made that difference. The cams in this instance, and, and I've said this many times, what happens is you free up, you put the cams in and that frees up a load of flow, which is great. But as soon as you fill that exhaust and it cannot flow anymore, yeah. you're not making any more power. So your first restriction is always your restriction. You can put cams on, you can put inlet manifold on and everything else. But if your induction kit and your exhaust is not big enough, it, they make no difference. Yeah. In fact, it can actually be worse. It can actually cost you power. So in this car's instance, it's actually making less power with cams in it than Dan's car without cams in it. But he has better mods either side of the engine, therefore more flow, therefore he's making more power. Sure. These cams would make power and you would be 240 mark but yeah so like with a cpl or a hybrid racing induction kit or one of our yeah. induction kits and mated up to a tegu 70 mil system you think this car make more power i do believe it would make more power i think the tegu 70 mil or the tdi three inch exhaust on this car coupled with like i say the hybrid racing or our dying days kit I think, and probably we would do tests on throttle bodies, in my yeah. opinion, but generally we've done one that marks that made a 240 with a standard throttle body on it, made the most amount of power with a standard yeah. throttle body, and we've had one with a 72 mil throttle body that I think we he broke the record of marks, didn't he? And he made, yeah. and he made 242. So very close in it with between yeah. the two throttle bodies. The throttle bodies really doesn't really make a lot of difference. We're only talking a couple of brake horsepower at most. Um, so... Yeah, I think this car would be again in that in that realm. Now for I sure. happen to know that this car is actually going supercharged in the near mm. future. So the modifications that it's going for next are actually going to be the three inch solid fab exhaust and headers. Yeah, um, and then if we get in the uh, a much better induction kit for a supercharger, then I think that's the way to go. I think the if, if the customer's saving to move forward for a supercharger setup and he's going for that exhaust, then get that exhaust on, and then we'd map again with that exhaust on, and probably, like you say, couple it with a, a hybrid racing kit or the Dyer Days kit. I think that, get this car where it needs to be, and then the customer will have the best it's gonna be right up until the point it supercharges. But obviously a lot of the stuff that you, you've already got on the car, you can reuse for supercharger side sure. of it, so it's, it's all good. And obviously second-hand price or second-hand stuff on these is sales well, so yeah. you can always sell on obviously what you're not using. It makes sense, it's a good plan. Mm. So funds allowing, Maybe next time we see this, it might actually be time mm. to supercharge it. Yeah, yeah, cool. But cool. Okay. Let's have a look at the graph. Do you want to have a look at the graph? Go on, then. We, we usually do, don't we? So why not? Okay, so here we go. This is the uh, the finished product, and um, it's looking pretty smooth. And we have got ourselves, here we go. Ooh, let's just scroll up a little bit. We've got 224 brake horsepower, which is 190 at the wheels. So there you go, guys. Thanks for sticking around and listening to our Richard. And uh, we'll see you on the next one, won't we, mate? We will indeed. We will indeed. Boy, I'll say it again. Wait, it was pretty fast.